Okay, so let's compare the three root of 10 now. Uh, obviously that one you missed right, and then the three root of 10. Uh, somewhere in the round adopted a little bit extra knee flex there. Okay, just try and keep that consistent, please. Um, and let's check the takeaway again. Okay, so that right leg this time moving quite a lot. Okay. Change the direction, good, regain the knee flex. Okay, so this one, yeah, the club face got square much earlier, didn't it? So that was a difference. That was a good shot with a little draw. I know the wind was a little bit right to left, but you should be able to see that difference. Okay. Okay, and then iron shot on three. Again, slightly more knee flex in this one. It's got to make that a bit consistent. There's that right knee and that lateral move coming in. Okay, change of knee flex and quite lateral. Slight change of posture there as the, as the right leg straightens, the head moves up. Change of direction really good, swing plane good. Face a bit open. Okay. And then I just want to quickly revisit this one just to talk about, now it obviously comes from a little bit of excess movement, uh, struggling to square the face in time, etc, etc. But it's just, it's a little bit fast and off balance. So I just want to watch this one in motion. Okay, so you can see yourself falling back there. So a little bit sloppy and active in the takeaway into the backswing. And then falling away at the end. Okay. Okay, so with the tee shot here on two, um, set up pretty good. Maybe a hair on the heels, but pretty good. Okay, we set up sort of just inside of that right bunker there. Okay, all pretty good. Okay, so you can see it take away quite, quite fast with a lot of movement. You can see the right knee moving, upper body moving. Okay, and then watch the right leg from here. Straightens out. Doesn't lock out on this one, but straightens out. And then this one I spoke to you, change the direction really good. Swing plane, very nice. And just that face very open coming in, which obviously you fixed later in the round. Hey, bud. Uh, thanks again for the round, for the round and a really active warning and obviously well played. Um, Right, so the things we discussed, we had a little chat there after the round as well, but the things we discussed, so you can see from the videos there, um, obviously the balance and stuff is all out, so it just needs, the golf swing is good, you've got a really good golf swing, that's why you can hit so many good shots, um, but it just needs a bit of refinement, okay, so it's just a bit sloppy and off balance, and I, I don't want to say wild, but almost wild, if you know what I'm saying, okay, wild tends to be more, you know, upper body loss of, of angles and posture and stuff, you don't actually do that. Mostly your lower body, maybe a little bit of tempo, um, but it's just a bit sloppy, so it just needs, the, the golf swing needs neatening up more than anything else. Um, right, so obviously that club face that we spoke about uh, on the second round really worked and continued to work pretty much throughout the round, and you can see the difference in those tee shots from two and from uh, 10, um, of, of squaring the face a bit earlier, and then, and then what that does to the ball flight and the shot and actually it kind of synchronizes your swing a lot better as well. So the club's in slightly better position. Um, so you adopted that quite nicely. When you, you know, I mean obviously theoretically you can overdo it, but I think, you know, when you feel like you overdo it, if you're not, it's just because the swing's got a little bit long and a little bit sloppy and a little bit out of position, okay? Um, you can see there are no real plane issues, okay? So you don't have to worry about that coming over the top uh, that you kept mentioning, right? We don't see much of that out there. Um, so the big place to start, I mean, you can see with the iron, um, the sort of balance points and the knee flex are out. With the diamond three wood and stuff, it looks fine. Um, and it wasn't like it all day, so maybe that was just a particular one. Uh, but obviously double check the setup. But then where it starts is, as you take the club away, there's a lot of movement here in this right leg. Okay, both that straightening action and a little lateral as well. And what we want to do is try and keep that right leg as still as possible. So we want to move weight there. We definitely want to shift weight. So that must work as a pivot. Okay, so turn slightly to take. I 
upper body turning to take our weight, okay, but it doesn't straighten and lock out and it doesn't move there. Otherwise, the whole plane of the swing and your body position changes. Okay, I mean, obviously, if it straightens, as you try and shift weight, you're going to lose your balance points, lose your posture, and that will then lead to a, a bad shot or a miss hit. Okay, so very, very hard work on that right leg. A little bit of setup, but a little bit of right leg. You may have to look at a new trigger. You'll see how naturally you adapt that right leg. Um, and then from there, everything good. So also think of that right leg as a little more solid with a little less um, straightening and a little less right hip rotation. That'll just shorten that swing out a little bit as well. It's unnecessary move we've got there. Again, just adds to the sloppiness. Okay, there won't be a loss of distance. If anything, there'll be a slight gain in distance because the swing will be a little bit more efficient. Um, you'll be building a little more tension and, and, and coil in your body. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. Right, so start with the right leg. Don't trigger hard and, and move around that right leg. Okay, we hope it shortens it out slightly. Okay, don't worry, just leave it. But that's what we want to see as a byproduct. Okay, do everything the same from there. Keep working on that, feeling that club face squaring. Okay, and then the only other thing I want you to do is then keep your balance. So once you've then hit it, okay, you just got to practice holding that balance for about three seconds. Okay, fine. So then we talked a little bit about the course management. Okay, now you testified to it. I, I called you on it and you testified to it. Uh, the course management is a case of not knowing. Okay, there is no plan, there is no sort of knowledge about uh, recognizing danger, how far is my club, what I should do from this line, these types of things. So we're going to start improving our knowledge in that regard. But first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to build your wedge game better because you're better off the tee and you're more likely to hit a good shot off the tee than you are from 100 meters. Okay, which is sort of, you know, it shouldn't be that way. So we're going to build the wedge game. Right, so we're going to start with a little sort of L to L type of shot with a narrow stance. Nice active body rotation. Okay, we're just going to get the club to go back to that L shape, through to that L shape. Okay, we're going to hit that shot over and over and over and over and over at about 80% tempo. Okay, and then we're going to give that shot a yardage with each of the wedges, long wedge, sand wedge, gap wedge, pitching wedge. Okay, and that's going to give you four distances that you can then play to when you get yourself in trouble. So if you find yourself in trouble, you know, okay, cool, I'm going to hit the ball there to 80 meters. That's my L to L sandwich, and I'm just going to hit it on from there and obviously try and make a putt. Okay, we keep it nice and neat and simple as possible. Okay, we can definitely shave a few shots there. Often in a round, you make a really couple of good swings and make a par, and then as soon as you're out of position, it's an instant double. Okay, so we've got to understand that sometimes, whether it's conditions or a poor shot or just, you know, a little bit unlucky where we've ended up, we have to manage that situation make some good bogeys, some stress-free bogeys, and that's really how we're going to end up in that zone we want to end up in. Okay, and then lastly, the putting. Okay, the putting pretty much has to be revamped, okay? Uh, not the putter, uh, but just your whole idea of putting. Your stroke itself is fine. It is a little bit disconnected, so a little bit more arms and wrists rather than shoulder rotation. Okay, but the mindset, the process, um, and most importantly, how you release the putter that has to change completely. So obviously we've got to start with the release first, get a feel for that, and then you work in the process to that, and then your mindset will obviously change. Okay, but that would be the plan, um, and thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon.